Nine years after the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Ishiro Honda's Godzilla depicted a monster awakened from the depths of the ocean to wreak havoc on Japanese cities. A giant fire-breathing reptile, however, was less horrifying than what was to come. In less than a decade's time, there would be dozens of real undersea beasts capable of destroying multiple cities at a time. I'm referring, of course, to ballistic missile submarines or boomers in U.S. Navy parlance. The most deadly of the real-life kaiju prowling the oceans today are the 14 Ohio-class ballistic missile submarines, which carry upwards of half of the United States nuclear arsenal on board. If you do the math, the Ohio-class boats may be the most destructive weapon systems created by humankind. Each of the 170-meter-long vessels can carry 24 Trident II submarine-launched ballistic missiles SLBMS, which can be fired from underwater to strike at targets more than 7,000 miles away, depending on the load. As a Trident II re-enters the atmosphere at speeds of up to Mach 24, it splits up into eight independent re-entry vehicles, each with a 100 or 475 kiloton nuclear warhead. In short, a full salvo from an Ohio-class submarine, which can be launched in less than one minute, can unleash up to 192 nuclear warheads to wipe 24 cities off the map. This is a nightmarish weapon of the apocalypse. The 1994 Nuclear Posture Review determined that the United States needed only 14 of its 18 SSBNs to meet the nation's strategic force needs. Therefore, the Navy decided to transform four Ohio-class submarines into conventional land attack and SOF platforms. This allowed the Navy to leverage existing submarine technology, while at the same time expanding capability to meet the current and future needs of U.S. combatant commanders. The closest competitor to the Ohio-class submarine is the Russia's sole remaining Typhoon-class submarine, a larger vessel with 20 ballistic missile launch tubes. However, China, Russia, India, England, and France all operate multiple ballistic missile submarines with varying missile armaments, and even a few such submarines would suffice to annihilate the major cities in a developed nation. The Ohio-class boats are the largest submarines ever built for the U.S. Navy. They are the world's third largest submarines behind the Russia's Navy Soviet-designed 48,000-ton Typhoon-class and 24,000-ton Bori-class. The Ohio's carry more missiles than either 24 Trident II missiles apiece, versus 16 by the Bore class, 20 by the Bore II, and 20 by the Typhoon class. What possible excuse is there for such monstrous nation-destroying weaponry? The logic of nuclear deterrence. While a first strike might wipe out a country's land-based missiles and nuclear bombers, it's very difficult to track a ballistic missile submarine patrolling quietly in the depths of the ocean, and there's little hope of taking them all out in a first strike. Thus, ballistic missile submarines promise the unstoppable hand of nuclear retribution and should deter any sane adversary from attempting a first strike or resorting to nuclear weapons at all. At least, that's the hope. As such, the Trident-armed Ohio-class submarines will have succeeded in their mission if they never fire their weapons in anger. The Ohio-class boats entered service in the 1980s as a replacement for five different classes of fleet ballistic missile submarines, collectively known as the 41 for Freedom. Displacing more than 18,000 tons submerged, the new bombers remain the largest submarines to serve in the U.S. Navy and the third largest ever built. With the exception of the Henry M. Jackson, each named after a U.S. state, an honor previously reserved for large surface warships. In the event of a nuclear exchange, a boomer would likely receive its firing orders via very low-frequency radio transmission. While a submarine's missiles are not pre-targeted, like those in fixed silos, they can be assigned coordinates quite rapidly. The first eight Ohio-class boats were originally built to launch the Trident 1C4 ballistic missile, an advanced version of the earlier Poseidon SLBM. However, by now all of the boomers are armed with a superior Trident 2 D5 ballistic missile, which has 50% greater range and is capable of very accurate strikes, which could enable them to precisely target military installations as a first strike weapon. Ohio-class submarines also come armed with four 21-inch tubes that can launch Mark 48 torpedoes. However, these are intended primarily for self-defense. A ballistic missile submarine's job isn't to hunt enemy ship and submarines, but to lie as low and quiet as possible to deny adversaries any means of tracking their movements. 
The submarine's nuclear reactor gives it virtually unlimited underwater endurance and the ability to maintain cruising speeds of 20 knots, 23 miles per hour, while producing very little noise. While other branches of the military may be developed in reaction to the crisis of the day, the nuclear submarines maintain a steady routine of patrols and communicate infrequently as to remain as stealthy as possible. Each Ohio-class submarine has two crews of 154 officers and enlisted personnel, designated Gold and Blue, who take turns departing on patrols that last an average of 70 to 90 days underwater, with the longest on record being 140 days by the USS Pennsylvania. An average of a month is spent between patrols, with resupply facilitated by three large diameter supply hutches. Currently, nine boomers are based in Bangor, Washington to patrol the Pacific Ocean, while five are stationed in Kings Bay, Georgia, for operations in the Atlantic. The end of the Cold War and especially the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty resulted in the downsizing of U.S. nuclear forces. However, rather than retiring some of the oldest boats as originally planned, the Navy decided to refit four of the 18 Ohio-class subs to serve as cruise missile carriers to launch conventional attacks against ground and sea targets starting with the USS Ohio. Meanwhile, the New START Treaty, which came into effect in 2011, imposes additional limits on the number of deployed nuclear weapons. The current plan is to keep 12 Ohio-class subs active at time, with 20 Trident IIs. Each two, more boomers remain in overhaul, keeping a total of 240 missiles active at a time, with 1,090 warheads between them. Don't worry, Restless Hawks. That's still enough to destroy the world several times over. The Ohio class will serve until the end of 2020, and may even receive some additional acoustic stealth upgrades until they are replaced by a successor, tentatively dubbed the Columbia class. With estimated costs of 4 to 6 billion each to manufacture, the next generation boomers may be fewer in number and will use new reactors that do not require expensive overhauls and refueling, allowing them to serve until 2085. The U.S. Department of Defense anticipates a continued need for a sea-based strategic nuclear force. The first of the current Ohio SSBNs is expected to be retired by 2029, so the replacement submarine must be seaworthy by that time. A replacement may cost over $4 billion per unit, compared to Ohio's $2 billion. The U.S. Navy is exploring two options. The first is a variant of the Virginia-class nuclear-powered attack submarines. The second is a dedicated SSBN either with a new haul or based on an overhaul of the current Ohio. With the cooperation of both Electric Boat and Newport News Shipbuilding in 2007, the U.S. Navy began a cost control study. Then, in December 2008, the U.S. Navy awarded Electric Boat a contract for the missile compartment design of the Ohio-class replacement, worth up to $592 million. Newport News is expected to receive close to 4% of that project, the U.S. Navy has yet to confirm an Ohio-class replacement program. In April 2009, U.S. Defense Secretary Robert M. Gates stated that the U.S. Navy was expected to begin such a program in 2010. The new vessel was scheduled to enter the design phase by 2014. If a new hull design is used, the program needed to be initiated by 2016 to meet the 2029 deadline.